you can either take the red pill, and you'll wake up, everything was a dream, or you can take the black pill, you can get torched. Well, I suppose getting torched won't hurt that much. I don't feel anything. Wait for it. Oh, wait. I just got a new client. Get torched! Get, get, get torched! Uh, get torched! I'm Wayne Carey, and this is The Truth Hurts. Well, we're very lucky here today because uh, it's obviously Melbourne Cup week and what a big week it is here in Victoria and privileged to have two absolute champion jockeys with me, Brent Thompson, who, by the way, is a Kiwi, but uh, we claim him because he was good. And then we have uh, the great Greg Hall, um, both champions and Melbourne Cup week. What? Uh, how are we, gentlemen? Excellent. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks for having us. And uh, he's not a Kiwi, actually. He's an Australian. Citizen. Yes. You know, yeah. that, uh, <laughs> I, I jumped, did jump ship a long time ago, 1980, I think, Wayne. But, um, in fact, you were play, playing in those, those – that, that, Yeah, 89 I 89, started. yes, 89. Yeah. Anyway, I do, do well remember, but um, – uh, lovely to be here. and I wanted to get you guys in actually for a little while, but no better time now. The Monday before the most famous Tuesday in, in racing. And uh, like, th- does that excite you this week? Obviously, you've got a lot of functions and there's different things that you have to go to, but do you still get excited around it? Yeah, yeah. now we're retired, Wayne. Yeah, 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 yeah still get excited. Um, you know, got a lot of functions and... Um, well, we're not having the parade this year down down um, Swanson Street, but um, so normally you go to that and uh, it's, it's a busy time and run into a lot of people and um, go to the races and um, just sort of uh, mingle and uh, but it's 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 uh, exciting in a in, in a way that um, you wish we're retired now, but you wish you were out there, you know, rather than the crowd. Now, I have the privilege of, uh, well, I know you a little bit better, Greg, but had, having had some chats with you as well, Brent, about, you know, what you've done in racing. But I want to talk a little bit about, obviously, where you where you came from, how you got your start. A little bit of that, because I do know that you two are, are best mates, and I think you might have been best man <laughs> A couple of weddings. A, few, a couple or a few <laughs> weddings. <laughs> so, so, it's uncharted too. So, that yes, one. yes, yeah, we won't yeah. uh, we that, won't That's in close. Um, that's uh, in the vault. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, go through and, and by all means, you two, uh, you know, get carried away with, you know, where, where did it all start? How did you meet? Um, and then I want to get a little bit political um, with you in particular, Greg, and I don't know about what you think, Brent, but I, I had a couple of conversations with Greg uh, the other day, and it's in and around being a Melbourne Cup winning jockey or a Cox Plate, whatever it may be, but just they could do it better. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Cool. Take us back to the start, you two. Uh, well, actually, I'll just bounce off him to be, to begin with. Uh, like, so th- this week, or, or first Tuesday in November, clearly – means um, something a, a, a little more, more to Greg um, because obviously he won the race on sub, sub zero. You're unlucky. I know uh, that. Yeah, I, I, I was. I, in, in reality, I should have probably could have won it more more than one time, but um, history will say I didn't. But, you know, so, you know, an event like the Melbourne Cup clearly means, or Melbourne Cup Day means a lot more to him than, than me. But, you know, still, at the end of the day, it's still part of those four days of a great carnival and... Um, and so to be, like, uh, for instance, on Saturday, um, you know, having won a derby, that it's a great yep. buzz. And uh, uh, I had a wonderful day one year. Someone reminded me of having won the three majors on the on the day. So any part of that four days is is wonderful. Um, but getting back to how we met, well, um, I came over to ride for Colin Hayes in 1978, and Greg had come down from Queensland riding up there um and um and uh you know he uh had just arrived fairly briefly i think greg in in, in melbourne as, as i did and um sort of met at the at track work and our uh, relationship sort of evolved as mates um beyond that it'd be um, fair to say you uh chalk and cheese you two 
Uh, I think so. <laughs> I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah. I remember that show, the Aussie... Yin and Yang. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the opposites, odd... opposite yeah. attract. Yeah. That, that show weren't called the Odd Couple. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah, but um, it works. Uh, yeah. And and just so so you you come over, you ride for us, you ride for a stable, and mm. and. I'm learning this, but I don't think a lot of people know this. So back then, I assume it's the same. So once you're with a stable and you're the the number one rider for that stable, then you don't ride for anyone else, if unless yeah. you don't have a ride. You're quite right. Um, yeah, mate. In the main, um, and at, at that period of time, like we always had um, plenty of run, you know plenty of horses here that were just um, mainly here for the for the carnival time. Um, because the big base was in South Australia and Adelaide, or at Lindsay Park rather, and and so you know, let's say we had a stable of about thirty rotating all all the time. So yeah, I mainly just rode for the stable unless we didn't have a ride, then I was able to take take a ride in in the, those races. But in some cases, we had a couple of runners per race, you know. Um, Babe, and, when you first come out and. Um, uh, were you 19 then when you went on Fury's order, the first Cox Plate? Uh, 17. 17. Yes. And then you went home. Yeah. And then I, we, we met then at the track. Yes. And I went back to Queensland. Right. And then you, you come back and then yeah. we, we connected up that's, from there. That's right. Yeah, well, that, so I got... You were riding for Hayes and I was riding for Henry Davis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I because I first of all came over as a as a 17-year-old, then I came back the following year, um, um, still riding in New Zealand, but come over for the Melbourne Cup uh, Carnival, um, the Spring Carnival, and uh, and then the following years that that's when I got the job to ride for the Hay Stable. So, and how'd that come about, mate? Um, well, I think the Cox Plate had a, a lot to do with that, having you know won it in, as a seventeen-year-old and then as a as as a nineteen-year-old, um, and then which was on. Family man, family man, man yes. yeah. And then Colin Hayes came to New Zealand for the yearling sales, which was in those days at Trentham. Nowadays, because I work for New Zealand Bloodstock, where the main the sales then became Karaka, which is near uh, Auckland, twenty uh, just about thirty minutes south of Auckland. Didn't you get a nickname? The break in and around that. <laughs> well, Keith, Keith Hillier was a journalist in those uh, days, way back with the Herald Sun. Um, Wayne and, and um, he wrote an article on me as a seventeen-year-old coming to ride the Horse Fury's order, and and it sort of stuck. You know, um, again, probably because of the Cox Plate that it made a headline and and seemed to stick uh, um, to this day. Yeah, I, I shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. the only still the uh, or the only jockey to win four Cox Plates on four different horses. That's right, yeah, yeah. Like, you, you obviously did it on wing, on the Great Winks. Yep. Um, uh, so, but, you know, still a minority. I, I think it is harder to win it on four, uh, four different horses. Oh, um, for sure. You only, had to, you only had to sit on that other horse and <laughs> yeah, steer it. Oh, a passenger. <laughs> yeah, passenger. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a passenger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so definitely harder. And, and Greg, um, your, your childhood... Uh, very different. Take us, take us through that. And I know, and I've heard you speak before, but it's uh, you didn't have it easy. No, I was, I, I was the youngest of three, and um, and I was born in Adelaide. And uh, my father um, and my mother, um, well, I don't know. I was two years of age, Wayne, and, and um, I was deserted. And my dad drove my brother and sister back to Melbourne, and. The story goes is um, he put me on a plane and um, in those days there was only Essendon Airport and um, um, as a two-year-old and uh, and the story goes that, and, you know, Dad, Dad had, had uh, I don't know whether he had a divorce or not, but Mum had another bloke and, um, and um, I got on a plane and landed at Essendon and one of his mates picked me up and, um, well, thank God he did. It would have been pretty hard getting a taxi as a two-year-old. Two uh, and uh, and um, and then um, it wasn't until 1979, I found out all this later, that uh, the, the mother didn't have custody of the kids then and um, I'm not sure whether she... Well, obviously she didn't really want us, but... Um, and... Uh, 
albeit I, I still love her and keep in touch with her, but um, there's just water under the bridge now and, um, yeah, so um, I, uh, my, dad was a, my dad was a jockey. People always ask me how yeah. how did you become a jockey, Greg, and my father was a jockey and he had four brothers that were jockeys and five sisters that married jockeys. My brother was a jockey and his son was a jockey and I was a jockey and my son was a jockey and I said to Dad, I want to go and work for NASA and he said, that's not going to happen, son. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up leaving school at 12. I was at Chiquita Lodge, the famous stable. It's still there today and um, I was there at eight-year-old and... Um, I left school at 12 and um, got my apprenticeship when I was 13 and, and um, I've been told her in life um, nowadays that, Greg, you got the 12 right, but you're supposed to do year 12, not leave <laughs> not at 12. Not leave at 12. Yeah. Well, people, you look at jockeys now, and I, and I say this, and, and I don't say it because I'm sitting with you guys, but if you look at all the sports in the world and you look, you know, the NFL, AFL, rugby league, rugby union, soccer, all of the, all of the contact sports, you know, uh, Formula One drivers who now are, you know, the, the technology says that they're protected. Even the motorbikes now, they come off and they slide. And so there's all jockeys. I, I think given that you're on an animal that weighs half a tonne with a mind of its own and mm. you're not, you guys are, I mean, you're going at what, 70 clicks, 70 kilometres an hour with another 15 to 20, 500 kilo, uh, uh, kilo horses around you. I mean, incredibly courageous, but not only courageous from that situation, but what you put your body through to be a jockey. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, um, what I find interesting um, when every now and then it gets um, um, somewhere on, you know, with social media tw- tweeted the, the, the scale of weights that were in our, our day um, and when, you know, because um, like handicaps in those days possibly even went down to as low as 45 kilos um, weighing, you know, say in a Melbourne Cup or a Caulfield yeah. Cup when re- weights are released. And, uh, and and so, you know, you're always riding, everyone was riding well under their normal, what was then the normal um, yeah. weight. And, you know, e- even there's um, something I have put on, on the whiteboard there at, at home and, and it had, um, must have been, you know, one of the years that I was riding in, in Melbourne and, and it had... Um, uh, the leading jockeys weights there, and Roy Higgins was leading at the time, and even even then he was riding something like about fifty five and a half, fifty six kilos. Where you know, uh, so so hard to imagine when you see these people later on in life. You know, when when uh, finish what they're doing, doing best, and and um, you know, live a normal li- life. So nowadays the scale is obviously much higher because. You know, the the average person is a much bigger mm. person through diet and all that sort of thing. And you know, I think we lived a pretty ridiculous sort of um, life uh, in those days. But you know, that was the way it was back then. Probably in your era, you did you know certain things there that they don't do do in this yeah. day and age too. You know, um, and you all have the you know much more help in terms of you know whether whether they be you know. Um, uh, Physiotherapies, um, um, you know the whole board uh, direction in life and life and everything, which has made a fantastic, um, uh, probably longevity, uh, if that's a word to, for the for the average sports person. Would it be fair to say, uh, given that we've got uh, Yin Yin Yang over there, you might have uh, you might have finished a ride on a Saturday Arvo and and gone home and had a marinated lettuce leaf and you know. <laughs> Uh, and, and maybe a little more behaved than the, 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 your best mate sitting next to you. You have told me uh, before, Greg, about, you know, you could put on as much as nine kilos and have to then lose that before the start of, well, whether it be – was midweek racing uh, wasn't around it, really back then. It, it was. It was, but, but not as but, – But it was basically uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday – so nine kilos from from your last race on a weekend, you'd you'd put that on, and then you'd have to lose that before the next uh, the next ride. Yeah, I'll just go back a step. When I was a yep. pr- apprentice, Wayne for seven years, um, it's it's all changed now. But um, so is everything in life, the same as football. But um, is um, I'd done a seven year apprenticeship and got five dollars a week and ha- every second Sunday afternoon off it, but you still had to get up at three o'clock in the morning. 
Mm. And I weighed nothing, you know, and um, and then fast forward, as I got going, um, it took a long time to mature. I'm still not sure I'm there yet, but I'll get there one day. I'm not in a hurry. Challenge that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry, babe. <laughs> and um, I, um, I actually um, got to a stage like uh, I started coming good when I was 30, unlike Brent when he was such a young mm. kid, you know, he was a superstar and uh, – and I started coming good then, and um, but um, it was fair to say, and um, the babe will agree with me here that um, you know Saturday nights we'd always go to, um, the Silvers or Tok H or whatever, and party pretty hard, and then catch up um, Sundays, and then um, and from thirty on, I, I'd get on the scales Monday morning, and. Um, and I'm starting to climb Mount Everest, you know. This is before the cup, and that, and uh, and um, I'll be 59 kilos. And um, by the next Saturday, through down at St Kilda saunas. In those days, you could have Lasix, you know, um, which were legal. Mm. Um, they're for pregnant women, but they're they're a fluid tablet, and Duramine, which were legal, and um, it was all above board and. Uh, and then I'd go to the sauna of a Friday afternoon and stay there from midday to about six at night, and then um, stay the sauna for that long. Not in, not in, in but but in and out, in, in, in yeah. and out. But I'd yeah. have blokes, big blokes like you, rubbing me down with salt and all that stuff, and um, then go home Friday night, and I'd have a salada biscuit, but they come in fours, and I'd just crack one quarter one, and I put half a poached egg on it. And um, I was starting to tear up, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit lighter than but, me. But then you had to have the energy. And, and then um, said I'd have my car packed with my suit and everything because I still had to get up at three o'clock Saturday morning and ride work. And I'd take another elastic tablet because when you ride, it makes it work hard, harder. And um, and then um, I'd have all my gear in the car and go straight from the track to St Kilda bars. And I still might have a couple of kilos to get off and um, and then I might be riding 50, 51, 52 that day, you know. So that went on for 20 years and, um, yeah, there's a lot behind the scenes and um, it's it's extraordinary, yeah. Well, we spoke, uh, you spoke about how things have changed. Um, the whip uh, has, been in the, has been in the news a lot about, you know, whether it's, you know, <laughs> c- you know the, the fact that in the Caulfield mm-hmm. Cup... So I'll lead you in nice. Why didn't you ever win a Caulfield Cup? By the way, you won a, you won everything else. What 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 happened there? Well, a bloke, a, a bloke, bloke said to me one night. He sort of I don't think he, he was a real friendly bloke with me. And I was doing a uh, function, and um, he said um, I think he was trying to take the Mickey out of me. And um, <laughs> got talking. He said, "Oh, Greg," he said, "You're the only bloke to win the Darwin, Brisbane, Adelaide, Sydney." Melbourne. Melbourne Cup. He said, but you never won a Caulfield Cup. He said, what happened there? I said, mate, I was never interested in the suburb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I led you in beautifully. No, I, I forgot to tell him I won five Mooney Valley Cups. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's an old chest. But, but it, it is, it is. Yeah. Uh, the, the, so the whip, and it has been in the news because the Caulfield, uh, what, what happened in the Caulfield Cup, won... And we know why that it's – but but is it a tokenism? Is it, you know, given that you can win a race by breaking the whip rules, you can still win a race and that race doesn't get taken off you. The con- Are the consequences enough for overusing the whip now, do you think? And is, is are the whip rules the reason? And, I've, and I asked Damon Oliver this uh, a little while ago and he believes – like we have got – we've got – you know, we've got a Melbourne Cup, you know, Michelle Payne's won a Melbourne Cup and, you know, we've, we've, we've got superstar women jockeys now. Is, is that because of the whip rule and not actually needing to, to be really strong on a horse like, you, like I guess, in, in your day you I'd, had to be? I'd like Brent's opinion on this first yeah, because yeah. he rode in England for many, many years, you know, and they've got different whip rules. Yeah. I, I personally think, you know, that the... Sorry, that, babe. Uh, Brent wasn't a real. I mean, he was aggressive. He was the best rider, but he wasn't a real aggressive rider. Mm. Sorry, mate. No, no, but I I can look at old footage and I I 
I don't necessarily like what I what I see, but but that was the, the style um, back in that back in that day. Um, but when I went to England and rode for what seven seasons, call it mm-hmm. in England, you know, I I, ch- I adapted it because I had to adapt to riding a different style, different um, ag- aggression, if you like, uh, or lack of it, and um, but um, I I think the, the the trouble that we have, um, Wayne, and, and and I think this should be addressed, and maybe it's about to be addressed. That in, in order to get on top of it properly, all states must do the same. Yeah, you can't have one state do it their way and another. If you're going to appease, um, it's going to be universal. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can only do it do it that way. And uh, even if you call it in Australasia. Um, but if you if you don't if you don't uh, all all work in unison and you know one screen here see, sees a jockey hitting a horse fifteen times and one you can only hit in the last half a dozen you know uh, 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 with the with the sticks now let's call them a crop um, and 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 you've got to count somehow if your jockey going as you say yeah. quite fast mm. and. Trying to remember how many times you've hit a horse, I, I, I would struggle to do, do that myself. I fa- did fail maths at school, yeah. um, and uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it, you weren't alone. Welcome yeah, to the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, better at something yeah. else. But join the join the list. <laughs> get back, getting back to it, uh, I think I think that's a whole crux of the matter. Of, of Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland, Western Australia, South Australia, every state doesn't. Um, uh, work under the same system. That's the only way that you can get it. Now, whatever that um, um, entails, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a, as we speak here, I couldn't say what I couldn't quite say that is unless I was a part of it. Mm. But I think that it, that it it has to be a, be addressed, and and it and it's probably um, it needs to have certain changes. I'm not sh- sure about, uh, and I don't say how many times you can. Use use the whip because again it opens a Pandora yeah. um, box. Whether you take a Caulfield Cup off a horse or a Melbourne Cup off a horse, it blo- you know, God knows what the ramifications of that was. Legalities and mm. you know goes to court. Someone says, well, that's not fair. You know, it's just a minefield actually. Babe, tell me this. Uh, I mean, as you know, I was a very aggressive rider, and when I had, we love our horses, and we're not out there. They're hurting them. Make no mistake of that, Wayne. You know. No, I think every and um, agrees with that. There was two guys, myself and Mick Dipman, who was a legend, and um, um, were very aggressive riders. And um, but I wanted to ask Brent: is um, is the question is 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 like you know I can go through several races where I've, I've won by. An inch or half an inch yeah. or whatever, and um, and you've got to know what you're doing. Being in rhythm when I went on the Cox Plate on Sub Zero, um, sorry, um, Superimpose, um, you know, I hit him 42 times, you know, and um, which is, you know, that's not, but we're in a rhythm together, and he was responding. He come from second last, and um, and he got up and won by an inch, and um, now. If that, if I don't know whether it would or not, but um, because we, we haven't got a crystal ball, but I'm pretty sure that he wouldn't have won if he wasn't ridden that way. Um, if the whip rule was in then, I was going to ask Brent um, that. I mean, a if they they were thinking about taking the whips away altogether, well, mm. that's impossible because uh, they get broken in with a crop or a whip or whatever. That but they don't hit them with them. But it's a tool, you know, to to make sure his mm. manners and all that. Not 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 just in a race, you know, whether yeah. it's track work or whatever. Yeah, come on, mate, we're going across the gap, or or we're going out in the middle, or whatever. And um, and it's a tool that you must have because he's been brought up that way. Otherwise, if it wasn't there, he can he can get away with too much and all that. And um, I was going to ask Brent that. Do you think I do? This my opinion is. I think you can lift a horse over the line with the whip. Now the whip's completely different now. It's it's, it's padded. Mm. It, it doesn't hurt them and all that. But um, do you think, babe, that um, if there was no no limit to how many times you could hit it, like the um, mark the other day in the Caulfield Cup, 
Um, do you think if um, if you weren't allowed to hit it or you're only allowed to hit it six times in the last hundred metres, and there's some horse that 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 respond to it, and there's some that don't, and, yeah. you, and 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 the horseman knows that. Brent and I know that, right? Whether it's a filly, a lot of fillies won't cop the whip and all that, you know. And um, but do you think, Brent, that the horses that respond to it, that that it's fair that you can only hit it six times? Oh, it, it, it's a difficult one to answer, answer that. I mean, you know, you've got. It, it, where I find that a difficult one, I, and I, I, I get where you're leading to, um, some some horses respond to um, being a bit more aggressive than than others. You know, you mentioned fillies. You know, as, as a jockey, if you sometimes you uh, hit a uh, use a stick one one time and you could feel a horse fold underneath you, so therefore you stopped immediately because you know it's not going to go forward. Um, but uh, I I don't. I, I, I guess in this day and age, from an um, aesthetic, I um, always struggle with that word, uh, point of view, mm. where you've got races being w- televised and watched all around the world, whether it's America, the Breeders' Cup's just been run, um, doesn't matter whether it's Epsom, Derby, Royal Ascot, you know, Australia, uh, it's everywhere. And so I, um, I think, um, as I say, when I watch Caulfield Cups and those sorts of things where, where I... I was way more aggressive than what I was later. I actually don't like that vision myself. But, mm. you know, I, I changed my style because I rode into di- different parts of the world and therefore I conformed in those places. But I think we can, uh, we can, uh, I think, Wayne, and, uh, uh, to, to answer the uh, question in short, mm. I, I think there has to be sort of some sort of, um, uh, I, I use the word conform, whatever, but a, but a balance. Whereby I, I'm not totally in ingredients where you say you can only hit it five times or ten times or whatever because you're always going to someone's going to hit it once or twice more at the end of the day you, that person he or she fighting out a finish the push guns are shoved they're going to pop one more in and and therefore if you're going to lose a race because you're because doing your best to to win that for Wayne Carey mm. say um, and it's worth about three million dollars. I mean, you're not really thinking that way at the time, are you? You're no. thinking of actually winning the race. It's yeah. like you kicking the last point in the yeah. grand final. You know. See, see I said to uh, you yeah. the other day, Wayne, and Brent, you're right that um, I mean, for me, I, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. But um, is and Wayne was sort of. I was with Wayne a couple of days ago at a function I'd, I'd done for him, and um, we had a good chat and. Um, is I would uh, I, and I think that Brent would uh, agree with me here. Is uh, you you know you ride an eight million dollar races or ten million dollar races these days and all, all that stuff. And um, is the last thing I would imagine. Well, Brent can answer this for himself. Is um, now you get to the two hundred and you're no, you already know the rules. Um, um, we, we we all know the rules mm. now, but the, the the last thing on my mind would be now someone's over, uh, is um, I'm half a length off him. Is the thought of thinking I could only hit this horse six times in the next hundred meters, and I and I haven't got yeah. the hundred meters yet. Is well, that would be the last thing. No, there's a lot of stuff going through the, your head. Yeah, well, the calculations. No, not not. Not not so much a lot of stuff. It is um, you got the horse already ready to hit the line hard and all that. Well, the last thing on my mind is I don't know if Brent agrees or not. Is well, I know I can only hit it six times, but if I don't get him, if I don't get him going now, well, I've got him warmed up and then he's getting hurt, going to the line harder and harder. Well, I wouldn't even contemplate about thinking about. Um, well, you wouldn't no, you, no. You, you, you you wouldn't think that. Well, you wouldn't count in your head yeah. that I've hit this it's horse. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible, it's impossible, to, do. It's, it's yeah. impossible to think but about that way. Well, that, ans- that answers yeah. my question. And I, I think yeah. just just to close on that, uh, you know, it, it's not a case. It's, it's not a case of um, losing the race on a you know the objections through interference were win at all cost. Mm. 
at the end of the day, you're just trying to coax that, that horse. But as I say, we can bang on here all afternoon yeah. about that one. But I think somewhere along the line, it, it has to fit in with all states to get it right. What about uh, best horse you've ever ridden? Both of you? I, oh, no, I know. Mine, I know mine would be Dulcify. Um, uh, and unlucky not to uh, not to ride not in the Melbourne Cup, Cup yeah, because yeah. got injured. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. He he broke his uh, pelvis and didn't finish. But um, I'm, I'm certain to the state that he would have won. He was better than them. He um, would have. Been. Yeah. By by panel. But um, uh, uh, throughout my career, Wayne, I rode lots of good horses and lots of good places. But he he sticks out. He sticks out. Another time, he um, Wayne when he won on Gurners Lane in the uh, Caulfield Cup. Um, Brad used to come back from England and stay with me and um, and it was that situation that he was riding for Colin Hayes and um, Gurners Lane went back to back and won the uh, Melbourne Cup but unfortunately for Brent that he had to he was stable jockey for yep. Colin so he had to take the ride and, and um, the best horse I rode is Jesus. <laughs> I know he. I know how good Dulcify was. Like he was just an incredible horse, you know. And um, I, I'd put him. I wouldn't be frightened to back him against Kingston Town. He was that good. But um, the best horse I rode is. It's it's very difficult for me to say because I only, I never patted the horse or sat on him or rode him track work or anything. And the statistics, you know, um, superimposed within the Cox Plate. Well, obviously he's a super horse. My favourite horse is Sub Zero. Was it the best horse? No, um, but I did ride two outstanding horses, and one got sold very young as a three-year-old called Zedative, and uh, had seventeen starts with fourteen wins. And got sold as a three-year-old, and um, to go to start it, and um, probably the he, best. He was a good sire, actually. Yeah, he, he was. Well. He, he, yeah. he did well for mm. for a, for a. Um, Middle of the range horse. If he was around now, he'd get thirty or forty million off one of the shakes or Coolmore or someone like that. But um, he was a super horse, and uh, but, but probably the best horse I rode was um, Mahogany. You know, he's um, mm. you know he could never ever um, get a mile and a half, and he won two major. Uh, der- There's derbies and derbies without mentioning um, states, right? But um, there's two major derbies with. Brent and I both won them both. Is um, is um, is the AJC Derby, which is a serious race, and the BRC Derby. And um, but and he was never entering it in another two thousand four hundred metre race or back in our days a mile and a half race ever ever after those derbies. No Caulfield Cup or anything. Well, he like. went back and won twelve hundred metres. Yeah, yeah well, he won two. He won two Lithgows over mm. a thousand metres, and he won two Lightnings over twelve hundred, or vice versa. And he won the Guineas, and he um, he got beat a short half head in the um, Cox Plate. Cox Plate by ten and a half kilos difference by a champion octagonal, but um, probably and, out, probably outrode you that day. Raymond Jane died. Oh, oh yeah, he sat three deep with no cover. <laughs> I, drew, I drew eleven and was running fifth oh, on the fence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ask him. Ask, 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 ask him. Ask him. Ask, ask him. He'll tell you. What about he rode that horse well in the Corville Cup? The end across. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> okay, take that he, he got a hot dog on the turn. He went that wide. <laughs> <laughs> well, that leads me beautifully, beautifully into this. Um, so I've got a horse over here called Ducks Deluxe. Now, I, <laughs> now clearly I haven't. It? No, clearly I haven't. Yeah. But if I did, and you were to put a jockey on it, in the state and, and it, you're the owners, who who are you who are you having riding for your life? Oh, uh, in this as we speak now, I mean the man at the moment, and he's been that way for a while. As Jay McDonald, he's he's taken all before him. Um, uh, I've got him down as not being biased because he's a, a, a New Zealander, um, but his record speaks for itself, Wayne. He's, he's sensational. Yeah, but would you agree? He is actually, he's outstanding. He's an outstanding. First time you agree with me. He, he's out, oh, turn it up, babe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, like a marriage, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, um, that's why he had three wives. We didn't agree. <laughs> I got feelings, Gene. I got feelings. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, um, Jay Mack is um, outstanding, and he's a terrific bloke. 
is a well mannered kid and um, he speaks very well. But I don't know whether Brent agrees with this or not. But um, you know, I was with Frankie Dettori. You know, I spent a lot of time with him for the past twenty years, and um, I remember one day we were overseas riding, and they the interviewer came up to him and they said, "Oh, Frankie, you was riding for Godolphin at the time," and they said, "What makes you the best jockey?" And his Italian broken accent, he said, he said, um, he said, I get on the fastest horses. Now um, I don't know if <laughs> Brent, I don't know, but I don't know if Brent agrees, agrees with this. But um, is J Max outstanding? There's no doubt about that. And um, but we're only but, talking present day here. Yeah. Here. So but, do, but, does but, Jay but, Oliver? But, where does but, he? No, oh. I, I was just going to go Incredible. into that, Wayne. Right? Yep. But, yeah. Um, is uh, this is nothing against J Mac? Uh, I love him. He's a beautiful kid, right? But when you've got a thousand horses, or or up to a thousand horses, and you've got a bloke with Chris Waller behind you, is um, that probably makes life a little bit easier, you know? And plus, besides, he can ride. Don't worry about that. If he, um, but I, if I was, if um, if I had a choice, I mean, either either wouldn't worry me, but um, I, I I would put Damien Olive on. I, I, does that make sense? I, I think you know, um, Ollie's because experience can't buy youth. Yeah, but mm. Ollie's record is just nothing short of sensational. Um, but I thought we were only just talking about yeah, yeah. Ollie's on the way uh, in the very close to the twilight because he signs off and. Uh, uh, back in in the west, you know, which is great, great, you know, finish where you started from, fantastic, and uh, and um, I hope uh, that he wins a group one up there on his on his way way out. But um, his career has been sensational, um, and he's been great for the industry. And even just to see him, Wayne, just win a, a double on if that's the only so two right. races he wins over the carnival, I trust he'll win more. That I mean, that how fantastic is that? You know, he's still still there banging away, make you know, he's still uh, making making headlines. And I mentioned before, we mentioned uh, Michelle Payne, obviously winning a Melbourne Cup, but Jamie Carr, a, a superstar. Mm. It, it, just that now, the amount of female jockeys coming through. I mean, uh, it's a great sight, and and all very very good riders. Yeah, and again, you know, it was nice to see um, uh, Jamie. Win a double, double on yeah. day yep. one. You know she's just had a, a, a detra- detractors of of late. She had an awful um, spill that would knock anyone's mm. confidence, and maybe and she's pro- possibly lucky to be back even now doing what you know. Like I know she's back very very fit and she's going good, but it does take a while, like in any form of um, um, sport industry, to get your confidence back, and that's a great morale booster for her. Mm. And and you know you'd you'd have to be blind to not to see how well she rides, how great a balance, and and I think her alone has been a wonderful um, 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 someone. You know the the other other females that are coming through, you know she's sort of a pinnacle for them to uh, to to reach. And a, a career was just interrupted by that, but I'm sure she's back on top top of things now. And you know they're. There's lots of good girls riding around, I must say. Brent, back in the day, um, I, I got a thing on, on, my, on my iPhone, um, Ray Selkridge and all the old jockeys, Kevin Langby and that, and, I, that, and um, it was interesting. I was only reading it yesterday. Someone sent, sent it to me and all these fantastic broadcasters and, and, and jockeys and, and the question came up about women riding and the majority of answers said, no, you well, they didn't say it in these words. They said, stick with your tea towel, darling, you know, before dishwashers come in, you know, women, it's, it's a man's game, blah, blah, Who blah. Who said that? Um, I, was, I can't say, it's on my phone. I, I, it was in the paper. Oh, a while it ago. It was in okay. the paper back in okay. the 70s, right, yeah. And I was um, going to say, that's about... Was that when they had the yellow, your, the yeah. yellow line at Caulfield, was it? The, the, no, women clear the all, the these were all Sydney, these were all Sydney um, right. um, dockies and um, journalists and uh, they all had their... Some said about women and um, and they, they all said, no, well, basically... No, they, they, they wouldn't fit in and all that. But um, and I text back. I said, "If only they knew today." But I was going to ask Brent, who was that girl's name? Linda, um, mm. um, Linda um, from New Zealand. Jones. 
and uh, uh, hey, Linda Jones. Yeah, she was one of the. Yeah, well, Pam O'Neill and Linda Jones, right? They were the pioneers of um, mm. women jockey be- right. before you were born, Wayne. Right? Yeah. And I was apprenticed well up in, in Queensland, and Pam, um, she got a license and it was all fr- fr- frowned upon, and she was. Very, very good at a superstar, and mm. and so was Linda Jones, and I rode up against them, and then it sort of went quiet with women. That um, nowadays, and getting back to Jamie, like I, oh, I've been a bit hurt that um, she's been. Well, I wouldn't say criticised, but um, probably sp- has, probably, pro- has. Pro- probably has, yeah. But um, um, yeah, you're probably right. She. Um, th- there's plenty of knockers out there. Yeah, that's it, it, really it, it, in this game. It's it's easy to knock people down, and um, and um, I was watching her rides, and um, when you come back from those things, uh, she wasn't get she wasn't getting on, you know, a full book of, of favourites when she first got back, and then people start getting suspicious and then um, scrutinising and owners are saying, oh, no, she's not right or she's not going any good and the media don't help. And um, and I watched her ride in the, in the Geelong Cup and she was on the favourite and um, and Brent, me, um, Jay Mack or Damien Oliver couldn't have rode it any better and um, it, it, the ambulance went past it. And um, But to see her ride a double on Saturday... Was fantastic, and um, her ride in the last was very mm. courageous. Like there was no room where she was going, and she took a gap only a certain that wide. Mm. And if all, it wasn't for her ride, it wouldn't have won. But I do agree this with 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 girls is um, they've got beautiful hands, and um, and they are part of the game. And um, you, I mean, well, look at Jamie. She, it's never been heard of winning over 100 races last year, you know, the, winning the premiership and all that. And uh, So um, she is a superstar and um, and it's very encouraging for other girls, you know, because um, I just think that they, um, horses run well for them. Well, that's a great lead-in. Um, so this will be up this afternoon, Monday afternoon, and we want uh, Anton asked me to give a tip on the Melbourne Cup last week. Now, no one wants a dingbat like me giving a tip on a horse race, so I'm going to put you on the spot. You've got to give us a tip in the Cup. Like I said, this will be up this afternoon, so when people listen to this or even, you know, if they uh, tune in later in the week, you're going to look like a genius <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or well, like a deal. Nothing's changed, so, Wayne. Yes, I know, I know. We, we, we always, yeah, by the way, as an ex-has been footballer, we always get asked to give our tips. Sure. We got we get asked to give tips a week before the actual um, games played, and sometimes players are out yeah, or they're yeah, in yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So get injured during the least this is the, at least this is the night, but the day before. So just give us a maybe a smokey or or a or one that you think uh, yeah is a good thing. Well. The first time, no such thing as a good. I thing know. First, no. first, first, yeah. first time ever, um, and I, um, I'm not a former student, Wayne, but I, I liked um, the horse, the horse that won the Caulfield Cup. I liked him from last winter when he won in Queensland. I thought, wow, he's a Caulfield Cup horse for sure. Anyway, so he 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 won, but I'm not calling myself any genius here. He he, he won. I thought that the Hong Kong horse would win the Cox, Cox Plate. Um, I haven't got a, a great view on the Irish horse. I don't mean that um, in the wrong sense of the term. He, he's just so short now. Uh, you know, it seems like you're coming in and just just. Who, start, what's uh, the Irish uh, horse's Vor, name? Vorban. Vorban. And yeah. he's he's under he's uh, under four dollars now. But um, if you if you go on what everyone sees or or talks of, he probably wins the Melbourne Cup. But. Um, you know, I still have a, a great respect for the um, for last year's Melbourne Cup winner, um, and ideally he drew well. Um, and you know, we Fair always know. Uh, no, 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 I'm no. Um, a gold trip. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, he he obviously marked uh, Zara. You uh, think it was a good ride? It was good ride. I thought. Yes. Last start. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Tremendous ride. Yeah. He gave him every possible chance. He probably is just a bit stiff that. Mark Zara knew, knew the horse so well. He just gave him a little bit of crowding, but he he ran his uh, heart out. Um, Caulfield Cup form always stacks up in the Melbourne Cup. 
So I think he's in in there with a live, hell of a live chance. Um, one forgotten horse, I thought um, um, the because uh, you just put me on the spot here. Um, another um, uh, Kieran Ma horse and uh, Dave Eustace's horse, and he ran fourth or fifth in the fifth in the in the Caulfield Cup. Um, um, God, sorry, you got me on the spot. I'm but, trying to get the feels. Um, he, yeah, <laughs> right. and uh, who rides him? Um, Benny Allen rides him, I think. Um, I thought he he might be a, an absolute smoky in the race because he's down on the weights still. Um, right to win, sorry, just right to win. Mm. Yep. So they're they're my three. Put it that way. I won't I won't stand one out. Greg. Yeah, I like the horse that won the Caulfield Cup. I'm just I haven't got the fields in front of me. Um, well, but what was it? Um, and his name always. Um, um, uh, Anyway, let's call him Mark Zara's ride. Yeah, Mark Zara. <laughs> Mark Zara. An easy one. And um, now he's had to make a big decision on huge. Um, a huge decision. Mm. What's the other horse, babe? Gold Trip. He had to the, get off the, the Melbourne Cup winner. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he won on Gold Trip the last year. And ran a year huge before. race in the Cox Plate. Yeah, and he won. Yeah. He ran a. He's. Nice. he's um, now, that's a. Uh, I mean, it sounds good to be in that position to have. Um, the, the 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 top two choice. right the top two choices but it's not mm. a good it's no not, no you, you don't want to be in that position Tough. because it touch wood for Marky and one thing about Marky is though at the moment is he's on fire he is riding outstanding you know and he's a big race jockey and um, he um, knows what he, he's he is a big race jockey and um, he's but as Brent and I know only too well that we've been in the same position and um, I tell you what, I'm not going to say nine times out of ten, but <laughs> it's happened plenty of times. I've, got, I've, I've, I've pulled the wrong rein and um, I'm sure Brent's been through the oh, same thing. Times. Yeah, hundred And um, so it's a good position to be in, but it also can hurt too. But um, I, I'd like, I like that... Um, um, those two, and because I don't think it's a uh, a vintage Melbourne Cup, and um, Willie Mullins' horse. Yeah, that's Vorban. Yeah, Vorban, and well, he's if, got two runners in the race, but Vorban's a favourite. Yeah, yeah, and um, I didn't know actually went over the jumps that horse actually, mm. but um, but apparently he's a, a, a very serious horse, and um, now that horse I can't think of its name either. Bred of uh, Chris Wallace that uh, misses the kick and um, that yep. Craig Williams rode and um, last start in the Caulfield Cup. Joe Marira is um, he's on fire. He's uh, rode twelve winners in the last ten days and uh, he's coming out here. They call him I forget his nickname now. Magic Man. Ma- Magic Man. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, he's. Did you, did you remember his name, babe? No, it start, starts with this, yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, <laughs> People but, um, can follow it. They only have yeah, to look up yeah, the yeah, yeah, C. Yeah. Waller. C. Waller. Yep. C. Waller and um, Joe, Joe Marira. If he jumps this horse, um, he's got a bad habit of missing the kick. And um, if he jumps out of the barriers, I think he's got a serious hope. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is well, it, you know, what boys, chances? at short notice... Thanks for coming in and having a chat Pleasure on away. the uh, Truth Verts. And for anyone that wants to uh, obviously follow that, they only have to look at the trainers and mm. who's riding it to see uh, who we were talking about. Sorry for putting you on the spot. I probably <laughs> should have uh, came out. Probably should have given you information. Oh, yeah, but it, it, it happens to <laughs> us. We, we should have brought it the Fascinating, though. fascinating chat because, and like I said, the utmost respect for what you boys uh, uh, did, have done. Um, absolute legends uh, in the sport. Um, the, 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 actually, I did want to touch quickly, um, and I did say, and I, we'll finish on this because I I think that um, you know I've got I've got some mates that have won Brownlow medal. I've never won a Brownlow medal. I don't know whether you know that, uh, Brent, but I was <laughs> favourite five times. One most, one. One yeah, most and I'm not and I'm not bitter. But if you win a if you win a I Brownlow would. medal, you get an invite to every Brownlow medal thereafter. Mm. So you you're an honorary. Mm. Uh, member, if you play over 300 games, you get two tickets to every football game, grand final, Boxing Day. Te- you become an AFL Life member. So there, there's all these perks for for doing a lot in one's sport. Yes, and just happened to be talking to the to your great mate sitting next to you, 
the other day and cannot believe that as a Melbourne Cup winning jockey does not get invited to the Melbourne Cup. Mm. That is yeah. an absolute disgrace. It's, it's staggering when you think it, isn't it? I it is. How many, you... how many Melbourne Cup winning jockeys are there? There's 144. So, and, and so no, they would only have to give out, and, and I, I assume there's a, there's a few I'm, of those. I'm, that I'm, are, I'm, yes. I'm God blessing. With the angels. Well, there's at least 50% have died. Well, that's, yeah. So so that is just astounding to think that you do it's not get age. invited to the Melbourne Cup and you've won it. You've I don't, won the race. I don't, it's a terrible, you know, it's hard for me to it's talk just, about, but I'd like Babes to pin on, on, on this that, um, I mean, I don't go to the races that often, but. One would have thought that um, if you won a Melbourne Cup, no, that's why it would have been an automatic ticket. Ludicrous to, to go mm. anywhere, but um, it doesn't work like that. I have to ring up. They have to. I, I have to ring up. They have to correct that. that. Yeah, I mean, when you think about it, like uh, I know, I don't know the full nuts and bolts of the AFL, but you know what you just said, I, and I know some some of, but I I totally agree with you. Like if, you know, at the end of the day, you've got um, only X amount of jockeys that are still alive that are ridden yep. um, Melbourne Cup, Cup winners. It, it, it's senseless, isn't it, not, not to – even if it's an invitation for the one day. Well, that well that's you know, that's it. it for the Melbourne – that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. At, at least, at the very least, yeah. you should be going to the Melbourne Cup exactly. with a ticket and a, and, and a partner if you want to take a partner. Sure, yeah, sure. And – and that should be it for the rest of your life. It's and it's I, I pretty think, simple. I, I think you should get life membership, Wayne. Yeah. I mean, not oh. that, not that you go every day or whatever, but and it's not just about the Melbourne Cup. You may well, not even go, but it should be. Well, to go back to you know other sports and and you know obviously cricket would I know be the football. Same, well, I imagine. well cricket, yeah, cricket. well yeah, you know yes. you you win a premiership. Even if you you know you win a premiership, you become a lot of football clubs. You become an all automatic life member. Whether you doesn't matter how many games you played. So. There's a lot to be said about that, and that that has Agreed. to be corrected, in Agreed. my opinion. And and you know what? And the truth hurts. We'll uh, we'll make sure that uh, you know we get that out there for you, Greg. So next year, let's yeah. hope that they change that. <laughs> and all others. And all well, all others the same. If you win, if you won a Cox Plate, well, guess what? You go to the if you're, you 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 get an invite to the Cox Plate every year. Well, it's, it's not a, it's not a puzzle, I'll, and it's I'll, not I'll, that I'll, hard to correct. I'll, exactly. I'll, I will say this about the Mooney Valley Jockey Club. Um, when I retired or whenever I was unconscious seven times and all that through race falls, um, they are a beautiful club and they um, they um, gave me um, life membership the day I uh, the day I retired and um, which is, which I'm very grateful for and um, so. Um, it's well, there you funny, go. The name Easy to are, correct. Easy, easy to one correct. to correct. Exactly. Good way. What about the mask? Good way to finish. We, you know what? We'll, we will do. We will talk about. Um, we, I could sit here and talk to you guys all day. But <laughs> yeah, we've, we've only got, uh, we've only got a certain yeah. amount of time, Greg. And 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 seriously, uh, you've he's, great story. I've obviously uh, had the privilege of of meeting this great man, and and you know, still today, um, you know, gets up every day, has his battles, but he's just such a beautiful, humble, gorgeous man. And uh, and and you know to come from where he's come from to do what he's done. Sure. And I know you two are great mates, and I see the affection. Um, I see the affection there. He can annoy me sometimes. Oh, well, that's <laughs> all good mates. All good mates uh, can annoy one another. But thanks again. And I know that. Uh, well, I know through the GBS, obviously. Uh, are you, a G, are you in the GBS, by the way, Brent? Oh, we're going to have to I've get been, you. I've been, been, been to an event. Been, yeah. yeah, we're going to have to get you uh, get yeah. you involved in the GBS. But uh, this man's a great ambassador for them sure. and does so many great things around men's health um, and the the conversations that uh, that he has. I know, and I've seen uh, grown men cry when he when he tells his story. Sure. So get along to a GBS event and listen to this man's whole story. We haven't got the time to tell it, but. It, it is a great one. Sure. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, he, he, Babe can be a bit frustrating too, yeah. but, I, <laughs> but, 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 but I still love him. Yeah. We love each other. Good on your boys. <laughs> See you, Bill. See you, Bill. <laughs>
Get George! Get George!